on behalf of the team led by Professor Shiva Fuku, um, presenting to you our fir uh, the first steps into resolution of mental convergence issues in the seismic response of uh, bridges. Um, so today, because of the uh, time constraints, we are only highlighting uh, some observations that we have and uh, further details into the analysis and the results can be found in the upcoming reports that we are um, preparing. So the motivation um, of the project is uh, to explore ways to adopt performance-based earthquake engineering concept into design practice. Um, this requires to perform nonlinear time history analysis uh, under uh, suites of ground motions uh, with different in intensity. Um, so the engine demand parameters are used in conjunction with the component fragility curves to come up with a decision variable such as the prob probability of collapse and uh, the estimate of the downtime. So the major challenge of this approach is a non-convergence in uh, nonlinear time history analysis. So on one hand, if we completely ignore those uh, unsuccessful runs, we might have underestimated the collapse probability. But on the other hand, if we assume that these runs are associated with physical collapse, then we might have overestimated the collapse probability. So the objective of uh, uh, our project is uh, to identify robust material and element models and select optimal solution strategies and OpenSeas, and then develop guidelines for robust nonlinear time history analysis of bridges and consistent collapse risk assessment. And we focus our study uh, onto the typical reinforced concrete bridges in uh, California. Uh, for illustration, we've uh, used the, an archetype bridge model based on Caltrans Academy Bridge, which is a, th which is a three span reinforced concrete bridge with two abutments and two bends, and each band consists of a rectangular cap beam and two circular columns. Um, we approach the non convergence uh, problem uh, with uh, three levels. So, at the structural level, we investigate different solution strategies different time integration methods and different mo adapting models and investigate how these affect the convergence properties of the model. At the element level, we looked into um, the formulation, the state determination of the element models and also how the elements are discretized. Um, and then at the material level, we identify robust models that are typically used in uh, uh, simulations of reinforced concrete bridges. Um, so first we investigate different solution strategies uh, um, and the goal is to identify uh, um, optimal ones for uh, simulation of bridges. So for example, for explicit methods like explicit new mark method or operator splitting method, um, these methods are relatively faster uh, and they do not typically face convergence issue because of uh, no iterations required. Um, but they're relatively less accurate and less stable because they might uh, blow up if time steps are not sufficiently small. On the other hand, the implicit methods, for example, the implicit new mark method, um, even though they're a little bit slower because they require iterations, and uh, as a result, they may uh, fail to converge, but they're uh, relatively more accurate and more stable. We also look into different nonlinear so equation solvers for the implicit method. Uh, for example, the newton raphson solver, modified Newton, newton with line search, trial of Newton, to name a few. Uh, we observed that uh, the sequence of solvers uh, should be uh, specified. Uh, so for example, when one uh, is not successful, depending on the state of the, uh, of the model, we can switch to uh, different alternatives. And the choice of initial solver plays an important role in the convergence of the global solution strategy. And in particular, uh, the line search strategy before the interaction iterations uh, seems to be helpful to control the direction and the size of the initial estimate. We also look into the, the damping model selection, um, and we focus on two most common um, damping models, uh, so really damping and model damping. So really damping is relatively faster, um, and uh, because it preserves the sparsity pattern of the stiffness matrix, but sometimes they may uh, lead to um, spurious damping forces, especially when initial uh, stiffness matrix is used. On the other hand, motor damping eliminates those spurious damping uh, modes, but they are slower because the uh, damping matrix is fully populated. 
Uh, next, we uh, investigate um, and uh, did a review of the common material and element models that are typically used in uh, reinforced concrete grid simulation. Uh, and we developed some standard scripts for testing uh, material and element models under different uh, load histories. So here are some um, uh, common uh, material models for steel, concrete, and um, for gap and impact uh, material model. Um, and also, uh, here are some common uh, element models. So for superstructure, we can uh, uh, we might use some elastic beam columns or some nonlinear beam column elements, including the force-based beam column, displacement-based beam column, beam with hinges. And we'll go into the detail in the in the next slide. Um, the foundation uh, and abutment, uh, we could use um, zero length uh, element, two node link, uh, rigid link, among others. Uh, here are some uh, common uh, element models that we investigate. So one of the most important uh, uh, element models that deserves special attention is the nonlinear beam column element. Um, and this slide shows comparison between two uh, uh, variations of, uh, of the formulation. So the force-based element and the displacement-based element. So the force formulation is based on interpolation of the internal forces, whereas the displacement formulation <laughs> is based on interpolation of the displacements. So the error uh, in the force formulation is due mostly to the numerical integration, whereas uh, the displacement formulation is due uh, to both the numerical integration and the discretization of the model. Um, because the force formulation is based on uh, the exact interpolation of the forces, uh, strong, equilibrium, strong equilibrium is ensured, whereas um, displacement formulation uh, only guarantees um, weak equilibrium. So it's usually mistaken that uh, only the force form formulation suffers from localization issues. However, in reality, both formulations um, suffer from localization, especially uh, when softening response um, um, is present. So in the force form formulation, uh, localization occurs in one equation point, whereas for the displacement formulation, it localizes in one element. So uh, based on those observations, uh, uh, the force formulation compares favorably against the displacement formulation because it's more accurate uh, due to uh, strong equilibrium. Um, and also it's more efficient, especially for large models, because uh, to achieve the same level of, of accuracy, fewer force formulations uh, are necessary. Um, also, we observe that this is uh, very important um, to the convergence and the accuracy of the, uh, of the uh, simulations. So we look at the discretization at two different levels, at the structural level and at the element level. So structural, at this, the structural discretization uh, means how many elements are used to uh, model one social member. Um, so for this uh, benchmark mo uh, model, um, we focus on the cap beam, and we have six uh, six nonlinear beam column elements for for the cap beam. So uh, the cross section of the bench is 72 by 80 uh, inches. Uh, so that leaves the length of each sub element 100 inches. So that's um, very unreasonable um, um, discretization. So we need a coarser mesh discretization. Um, so that's the first category. The second category is element discretization. So that's how many um, integration points or final sections uh, we need to spe specify for each element. And uh, especially um, uh, in the presence of softening, uh, localization issue is a, is a major uh, problem. Um, so uh, in the absence of non-local smoothing strategy or <coughs> localization techniques, then we uh, recommend uh, to use four to five um, integration points uh, for columns. And we have to make sure um, to have the integration weights to be consistent with the plastic inch length. It's not too much smaller than the, the characteristics length. So um, uh, in order to identify uh, physical collapse of uh, bridges, it is important to look into the collapse criteria of uh, a bridge model. So uh, the last criteria of bridge models can be roughly uh, classified into three groups. So the first group is based on the deformations, for example, the maximum column drift ratio, 
the maximum unseating displacement of abutment or uh, could be yield displacement or residual yield displacement of the columns. Uh, the second category uh, consists of models based on uh, strain, so for example, base shear, columns, or maximum uh, moments. And the third group uh, uh, deals with, uh, with damage. So for example, the most uh, common model is the part damage model. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, models, such as the mod modified damage model, the low cycle fatigue model, or a recent history of damage model that uh, we developed based on damage mechanics. So um, these observations allow us to develop guidelines um, as a first step to resolve non-convergence issues in uh, bridge simulations. So the first step before uh, running the analysis is to check the model geometry. So to check the aspect ratio of the elements, check the number of elements per structural member, and check the number of integration points for elements to make sure we uh, specify reasonable um, uh, model uh, geometry. And uh, if necessary, we have to re we should uh, remesh before running the analysis to avoid um, uh, unnecessary problems. And step two, we actually perform the novelty of time history analysis, uh, some recommended uh, default setup. Um, so time integration, we use implicit Newmark. Uh, for the solver, we use newton Grafson with uh, line search and steps of division. Uh, for, uh, for a damping model, we could, use, we could start with a really damping with committed stiffness. For the element uh, model, we can go with the iterative force-based beam column elements that allows for subdivision of element deformation increments in the state determination. Uh, and then, uh, in, if non-convergence occurs, then uh, before we go into the details of the analysis or performing a, a further analysis, we should step back and then run the post-processing scripts to check the engineering demand parameters. For example, we check the column drift uh, at that step or the rotations and so on. Uh, if those EDPs exceed uh, uh, some limit thresholds, then we can say that uh, physical collapse occurs and we can, uh, we can move on. However, if uh, these EDPs check suggest that uh, these, the values are small and um, uh, within the limits, then we can say that um, this convergence might be due to some numerical issues and uh, requires us to look further into the analysis. Then, uh, if that's the case, then we continue the analysis with some alternative options. Uh, for example, we can switch the global strategies to use some other options, such as the Krylov or what if I need some Rapsin. For the element state termination, we can increase the tolerance. Um, and for the damping model, we can try different alternatives, such as uh, for the railing damping, we could uh, select different modes to form the damping matrix. Uh, we could uh, try the modal damping. And also, we could uh, uh, subdivide the global time steps. So, as a summary, we have developed standard scripts for testing the element and material models. Um, uh, the, the studies we have performed uh, confirm the interaction of the global sh solution strategies and the local element state termination. Uh, we also observed that uh, the implicit time integration method is uh, relatively more robust. And we have uh, enhanced the beam column elements in its uh, formulation, the state termination, and the convergence criteria. Um, we have reviewed um, different collapse criteria for reinforced concrete bridges, and uh, we start start to develop guidelines for resolving non-convergence in nonlinear time history analysis of, of bridge models. So um, the results are quite promising, but there are still a lot of rooms for improvements. So here are just a few examples of uh, items that we would like to uh, look further into. So first is um, domain decomposition. It be very helpful when we analyze a large bridge models and we have some damage localization at specific regions. Um, another item could be to explore a new robust solution schemes such as the constraint convex minimization is very prominent and promising. And also, we uh, would like to continue to enhance the beam column element models with a focus in its uh, in interaction of global and local iteration strategies. <coughs> so, uh, as a final remark, I would like to uh, acknowledge um, these individuals. Um, your help are really appreciated. Thank you. Are there any questions for Kevin?
start with something. So in actually two questions. In step number one, you're talking about uh, establishing the number of elements and integration points. How exactly do you decide when you reach the right numbers? Huh? I can see that in that step and you, you indicate you have to uh, in step one determine certain parameters. You know, what guidelines do we have to, you know, to decide that we actually have the correct numbers? Huh? Okay, so that's a very good question. So, uh, so the number of integration points and number of elements required, uh, well, so the question is which number is reasonable? Huh? And so that comes from a, an independent analysis that we did for, um, for the archetype bridge model. So we looked into uh, that cap beam and we have different, uh, we have that certain number of, of elements for that member. So we studied the response for different um, um, number of elements. And then we uh, compare the, the local and the global response. And then we come up with a guideline. So how many number, uh, how many member uh, are reasonable for uh, for social member, and also it depends uh, on the uh, cross section and the uh, type of enforcement. How much enforcement is required? Is it supposed to govern flexure or shear? Or what type of uh, filler modes are required? So uh, that is the, uh, that is done prior. Uh, and, uh, you are not using. You are not looking at experimental data to match these things, or so definitely. So that's. Uh, uh, Comparing to um, uh, experimental data is part of the independent uh, study that we did to come up with the guidelines. And also one more question quickly on the uh, on the threshold. You, you mentioned a threshold. You say if you don't reach it, then you know. But I think determining what that threshold is, is also a challenge. You know, how do you set these thresholds for different failure modes and things like that for your collapse mistake? You know, you say if not, it's a numerical issue. But what are those thresholds, and how exactly do we go about? Uh, you know. Setting those thresholds. Yeah, so the very good question. So that relates to your first question as well. So uh, that comes well, with a combination with, uh, from the literature review uh, and from the analysis. Uh, so we perform uh, like a set of knowledge times three analysis and we come up with different, uh, a, a post processing script to extract different uh, uh, EDPs. And then we, will, uh, we, we did a, a literature review to see uh, uh, for each EDPs what is the the, the range of values um, to indicate different um, damage states of the, uh, the components. And we use that uh, as the, the guidelines to decide whether or not the components help. I have one very quick question. Where are these scripts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Uh, okay. yes. So they're going to be posted somewhere or published? In a, in a yeah, so right now we are uh, wrapping up the scripts and we organize the scripts so it will be ready soon. Good. Any other questions? So you talked about making some enhancements, enhancements to the beam column elements. Can you tell us for some of the enhancements that you have made? So I mean, you uh, did not list them in there, but I'm curious. Yes, yeah, so uh, we looked into the formulation. Um, uh, so. Um, So here, um, so the the quick uh, quick answer is is the details of the report that, that's coming. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But here is the three um, bullet points that uh, kind of summarized uh, uh, the the enhancement that we we looked into. So in the formulation, we we find ways to uh, to make the formulation more robust and more efficient. Uh, also in the state determination, um, how to determine the, the mm -hmm. forces from element deformation uh, and so on. Also, in the conversion criteria, we uh, we sharpened the conversion criteria a little bit in the state of the nation to make it more robust and efficient. Um, one question to add up on that. In the current OpenSea's code, from what I've seen, if the core space element fails, it brings the entire analysis down with it. Have you looked into that? Yeah, so um, it's correct. So uh, when uh, uh, non-conversion occurs, so that could be from uh, the, the, the global solution uh, strategies. That's not sufficient, or because of state elimination of the element, it's not sufficient. So depending on um, why it fails, we have to switch into proper um, uh, alternatives. So here, this is a very uh, general slide to uh, and say that uh, when it fails, we switch alternatives. But which one comes next is important, and it depends on 
uh, what kind of uh, um, uh, error message we get from the global or the, the local uh, you know, iterations. So here you say increased tolerance. Would that mean restarting the entire analysis? So not the entire analysis. Uh, so when it uh, fails, we, s we continue from there or maybe from the previous few steps and continue. We don't have to continue from the beginning. Okay. Hmm. Increased tolerance, I suppose, you mean for the element? Yes, yeah. So um, the currently the element in open seas does not allow changing its tolerance, mm -hmm. right? It's only a fixed tolerance. Yeah. But if you have an ability to change the tolerance of the element, even making it non-iterative, which mm -hmm. currently it is not, yes. then you may be able to continue and skip, do a couple of steps without iterating. So are you, on the uh, element. Are you modifying the code to enable us to do yeah. that? Yeah, that's, that's good that's to know. Yeah. On the fly as well. Right, right. <coughs> yeah. Also not good. Related? Gary? When you say non-iterative, you mean the formulation where it's it's accepting a small error and skipping the internal iterations, and that's the current currently implemented element, and and you don't have a uh, the user doesn't have an option to sort of use the iterative the version. Iterative. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. 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 The option's there. It is there? Yeah. No, it does not it work. Oh, okay. If you set the tolerance large enough, it'll... Oh. You do have to save something at the element level to continue. It's not just simply saying, oh, gee, let's quit. Something has to be done at the element level, stored in history, so that it can go and for the next newton raphson iteration that comes at the global level. So it's not just as simple as saying, iterate or don't iterate. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a little tricky, but it can essentially be done so that you choose the element not to iterate if it wants yeah, at a yeah. particular step. So it is it is said um, defaults that anyone can use and <laughs> uh, yeah. optional commands for yeah. the yeah. those who are well, you know, very I mean, well informed. You know, that, you know, those are excellent points and in fact Frank is working or is kind of aiming in sometime in the future of have some kind of artificial intelligence scheme that kind of at least takes you to the next level. I mean, it will never be foolproof, but at least take you to some level. So that's what we are kind of trying to move towards. Yeah. But uh, so we, we, because it is a lot, quite a lot of parameters that affect what exactly you're going to do next. Mike, you want a question? So to try to move us away from beam columns, did you ever <laughs> run into any cases where the uh, non-convergence is due to your abutment models, which um, tend to have a pretty large influence on the overall bridge response yes, compared to the details of the, the column elements. Yeah, that's an excellent comment. That will be uh, further development. So that's going to be a next year project. Okay. So how about non-RC bridge structures? I'm sorry? No. Non-RC no, bridge structures. Building structures. Um, so we, for this project, we focus on infrastructure bridges. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, another option for next year project. <laughs> <laughs> Did you 